let's move on. Uh, we're going to talk about some old business first, things we've talked about uh, on the show before, um, and we're going to kind of follow up on where they're at now. Uh, so the first story is one that you were looking at, um, uh, Matt, about the GitHub attacks that I think we had talked about yep. probably a few weeks ago. We covered them on the show last week. Okay. Um, for people who, who missed that show, it's, it's there was a DDoS attack using manipulated websites, people passing through a certain point of, um, of traffic, uh, suspected to be China at that point that were being, um, the traffic was having small amounts of JavaScript injected, right. which would make requests to these target sites. GitHub was one of the primary targets, greatfire.org was the other one, um, and the GitHub site was actually hosting uh, greatfire.org's code, which is the actual target of that DDoS attack. So speculation was that this was some manipulation being performed at the edge of the Great Firewall of China, but there hadn't been any proof yet. We have this blog post from uh, Errata Security, Rob Graham, who's been consistently coming up with some really interesting work. Um, and he's shown that using some clever traceroute tricks, uh, he can pinpoint the exact device and the location, not the physical location, but the network location of where this traffic is being manipulated. Turns out that the, the manipulating device actually returns very strange time to live values. Okay. Uh, time to live being a field that's used in, in um, network traffic to designate how many hops the traffic should be continued to be forwarded for until it's considered that it's, it's either, you know, right. it's misdirected. Never reach its destination. Exactly. Right. Most people are familiar, if you're an IT guy, with traceroute, which is a clever trick of decrementing that TTL field and resending the same request to map out the hops in, a, in a, uh, the, 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 the flow of traffic. What Rob Graham did is he, same kind of idea, using an HTTP connection, but making a full connection and then starting an HTTP session underneath it, but tampering with the TTL fields only after a full connection has been made. So hmm. you make this full connection to your target, you get your SYN, SYN ACK, ACK, and then start fooling with the TTL values, which is when um, an HTTP manipulation device would start paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out this device would start start setting the values to some crazy thing like 99. So, which is way out of the range of, of probability. If what you're sending out originally is like 18 or 17 and it comes back to you as 99, you know someone's messed with it. Right, yeah, and usually I think a lot of them are like 64 or 48 mm -hmm. as the starting point. It changes like that, with the depending operating, on the operating system. system. Yeah. Uh, so 99 would be a weird one, yep. right? So he, was, he pinpointed using this technique uh, that the device that was tampering with the traffic was somewhere within China Unicom's network space which is, I guess, generally accepted to be where the Great Firewall resides. So interesting work. Uh, we have the link for that if you want to go and check it out. All right. So basically, long story short, there's some mis mystery device somewhere along the path between you know, visitors. And from what I had heard, um, it kind of sounded like when people would visit Baidu, which is kind of uh, it's the Chinese equivalent, Chinese equivalent of, Google. of Google. They have an analytics um, piece of uh, JavaScript that people can put at the bottom of their web page. It tracks like who's been there, and you can go get stats up on Baidu of you know right. what do my visitor population look like and whatever. Anyway, it looked like there was maybe some tampering going on there, but now what this kind of looks like is that it wasn't really Baidu that was tampering with it. There's something in between along the way that was that was uh, doing this uh, tampering with the actual JavaScript that comes back, and that JavaScript that came back was not really the, the Baidu analytics. It was some rogue code that would try to make the client machines go visit GitHub. Yep. Uh, and certain URLs up on GitHub. And uh, uh, it also looked like they excluded China from, so Chinese machines, it was mostly devices outside of China when mm -hmm. they would visit and come in, they would hit this whatever mystery device, get this rogue traffic back, and then start attacking, well not attacking, but they'd start making web requests to, to GitHub. Well, uh, and some other places, I guess, too, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. those those were all the known facts as of last week. It's it's to, it's this story that's pointing to exactly where. The yeah, right. Are. There's a little bit more uh, unraveling there. Of um, it doesn't look like it was Baidu that was necessarily tampered with here, but something along the way on the way in mm -hmm. um, uh, on the network route, right? Right. So interesting. Hard to prove still, and but um, <laughs> there's you know a lot of people are speculating what's. What's the deal with this attack? We know that what was attacked here are the New York Times 
uh, GitHub repository. It's like basically a copy of the New York Times articles that in gets Chinese. put up on in yep. Chinese that gets put up there. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was that greatfire.org, right? That uh, I'm not sure what what that one does, but it's it's an anti-censorship organization. Okay, anti-censorship. So obviously those two things being targeted news and censorship you know probably news about china and what's going on from an uh, from a uh, western point of view uh interesting that it was uh you know being tampered with there so mm -hmm. uh thanks for the update on that one sure. i guess we'll we'll keep an eye on that and it is a good article because he does go into the details it's it's worth the read because he explains how he used trace route and if you're not familiar with it how he determined that that was the case there mm -hmm. um that there's something in the middle that you really can't see.